Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you today. God bless you, beloved. God bless all of you. Praise God. Amen. To God be all the glory. To Him be all the praise. And I'm so grateful and excited um, about this moment that I can share with you briefly um, some of the things the Lord has been laying on my heart. And, you know, um, I believe that this is the greatest hour, one of the greatest hour that you as a believer can be alive and be in the land of the living. So I want to share with you what the Lord has been speaking to me. So many of you have been calling and asking us to expound even more on um, the benefits of prayer and also some of the reasons why as a believer you really should pray. So of course we're in a time of consecration our 21 day every month we fast at the beginning of the month. We've been doing that for many many years and um, this month in particular um, the month of October we are doing our 21 day fast and of course it's already in progress. Many of you have come on board. Uh, it's a challenge for some of you and, and it's a great opportunity for others of you to grow and to be increased. So thank you for taking the challenge, embracing the opportunity because you're going to grow. So today I want to get right into it. So if you're coming in, come in quickly um, and do me a favor. It's going to bless uh, millions and millions and millions of people. So take the moment out to share the link with somebody. Praise God. And it's a, uh, if you want to interact as we go along, I welcome your interaction. Praise God. Amen. It will be so good if you will let me know. Praise God. Amen. And hallelujah. Uh, um, where you're tuning from today. As you know, we have Global Center Press and it's all over the world. And I want to know who is with us today, who is watching. Let me know where you are today. I will be so grateful. I want to pray for you. So stay to the end. I want to pray for you. These are the times we're living in, beloved, where I believe that more than all, we need to know what the Spirit of God is saying to us about the times and the seasons that we are in. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so I believe that knowing what God voice is saying and being able to interpret it praise God it puts you at an advantage you are disadvantaged if somebody is speaking to you and you cannot understand you can see their mouth is moving but you cannot understand or interpret exactly what they are saying to you that puts you at a disadvantage so I want to just get down right to it and speak a little bit to you about prayer as you know a personal knowledge of myself our church we are praying church but we are a church that don't just pray we don't just pray we pray with power and we pray with purpose our prayers accomplish so many great and mighty things and of course we are unknown worldwide praise God amen for this area which is prayer and one of the things that uh, when Jesus uh, spoke to us and called us into ministry over 20 something years ago he said in fact he called me when I was the age of uh, uh, 16 was the very first time I heard the audible voice of God praise God in my bedroom and I and I remember it to this day what the Lord said to me, I've called you to preach, amen, deliverance to the captive, praise God, and, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Well, I didn't know anybody that was in prison back then. <laughs> And I sure enough did not understand what it meant to preach deliverance because the church that we were going to was a Baptist church and there was absolutely no deliverance. Praise God. Amen. The people that were some of the deacons were drinking. Some of the people were smokers. Some of them were adulterers right within the church. So there was no there was no deliverance. And then the Lord said, but I'm calling you to preach deliverance. And that's one of the things I want to get into with these sessions, power pack sessions for you. But, but today, I'm going to be helping you to understand the importance and the benefits of prayer, praise God, and fasting, and the Word, and growing in the knowledge of the Word, and also in prayer and in fasting. So that, that's going to help you today. So real good if you want to get your tablet out or, or notepad, get it out. I'm going to be real quick. Praise God, up and down and out. I'm, I'm telling you, but if you if you want to grow, you need to know. If you want to grow, you need to do what? You need to know. So um, prayer is 
uh, somebody said prayer is communication with God. Prayer is communication with God. But prayer is much more than that. Prayer is much, much more than just communicating to God. What's the sense of you communicating with somebody and they are not communicating back to you? Or when they respond back to you, you cannot interpret what they were saying. So prayer is a little bit more than that. Prayer is a relationship with God. And those these are some of the things I'm going to mention to you today. When you begin to pray, what it does for you you as an individual and what it does for God, the one you're praying to. Also, I want it to be understood that prayer is not just, uh, like I said, it's not a monologue, it's a dialogue. In addition to that, prayer is not, praise God, just that standard, a uh, standardized. Prayer is mobility. Prayer is the, having the ability to travel and to move in realms, praise God, realms of the spirit and to accomplish things and amen to, to, to see results so in order to get results prayer involves movement so it involves what movement I often say that it involves traveling praise God traveling or traversing from one place to the other moving things from one level to the next uh, shifting things from 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 one ram to into the to the ram where it should be causing an effect causing results to happen so if you do not see any of that happening if you don't have the ability to travel and to move and to cause things to shift praise god in your times of prayer then i want to submit to you that maybe you are not praying or if you are praying you're probably not praying what effectively so i wanted to get that in your spirit prayer has got to be effective it has got to work out for good it has to accomplish something beyond the place where you are at the moment when that prayer has been, been executed amen so in philippians 4 very quickly it starts by saying do not you know it says be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto god so it, it, it's, it's giving you an opportunity that god wants to know what your request is he wants to know why are you coming to have a conversation with him so that's the first thing that needs to be established you are praying because why you have a request you have a, a, a there's there's a specific reason there's a why why you are engaging uh, in that moment, praise God, of uh, prayer. So, amen. And he says, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. When you pray, amen, it's supposed to keep your heart and mind. In other words, it is supposed to cause you to get rid of the spirit of anxiety or the spirit of anxiousness. It brings you into a calm or into a comfort. That's what prayer is supposed to do. So, I'm going to give you real quick praise god amen at least about maybe 14 or 15 uh, um, basic things that prayer is supposed to do for you as a believer praise god amen man ought always to pray luke 18 and 1 says and not to faint so god is giving us an instruction if you're going to be able to stand strong if you're going to be victorious if you're going to be an overcomer if you're going to get results if you're going to move anywhere in this life prayer has to be your number one priority okay are we agreeing today it has to be what your number one priority so prayer amen is is one of the reasons why we should pray is because first of all god commanded us to pray there is a command or an instruction to pray and that was the scripture i just quoted to you man not always to pray so prayer also causes us to build eternal altars okay increasing in spiritual ranks and even in spiritual capacity the more you pray the more you increase the more you expand the more you grow the more you you know you come into praise god amen the volume of of, of, of the knowledge of God, the knowledge of the Christ. So people who don't pray have a very low capacity. They have a very low, praise God, amen, uh, 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 spiritual, amen, uh, ability to accomplish things. And I would even say they have a very, very low um, velocity. There's no speed. There's nothing that happens in their life that they can say, poop, it happened because, well, I'm a prayer warrior or I'm an intercessor. Praise God, amen. So 
prayer, it, it helps you to build an eternal altar, an altar that can never be shaken, an altar that can never be moved. Praise God. And of course, you know, I've taught you before, those of you that are part of our Bible college, is that, amen, that prayer, amen, everything that happens in life happens because why? It happens over an altar. Everything in life, even in the kingdom of darkness, there is an altar. There is something that is set up where 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 a person has dedicated unto, amen, a deity or a God. So where there's an altar, there's got to be prayer. Wherever there's an altar, there has to be what? Prayer. Prayer produces power. All of this I'm going to cover with you today. So, amen, when you begin to pray and you have an eternal altar built up and your spiritual capacity is increased, prayer causes you to receive, amen, amen, real, the, the spiritual realities of God. You're not living in a, in a, in just in a, in a, um, in a magical realm, no, or a mystical realm. You're living in the realm where the spiritual realities of God become real to you. It becomes an existence to you. So you're not always just searching and can't find anything. You're not always looking and don't know where, where to go. You're not always asking and don't have answers. Prayer pushes you into the spiritual realities of things. You begin to understand it. And of course, amen, Paul writes about this in the book of 1 Corinthians 14. He talks about even speaking in the language of the Spirit, speaking in tongues, praying in the Spirit. Hallelujah. These things causes you, amen, to begin to increase, amen, in your spiritual volume and in your capacity. Prayer, amen. And the next one, number three, prayer. I don't know, maybe I'm on number three or four. Praise God. I always get these numbers mixed up. Praise God. But prayer stimulates humility. Prayer stimulates humility. Why do I say this? You know, Jesus said these words. He said, um, um, if you will humble yourself and pray and seek my face and turn from your ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive your sins and I will heal your land. So prayer, of course, right there, several things prayer do. It produces humility. You cannot still be proud and pray to God every day, three times, four times a day. No, prayer will also produce a spirit of humility in you. Praise God. Amen. So if you will humble yourself, seek your face and seek his face and pray and turn from your wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive your sin. I will hear your life. So prayer produces a spirit of humility. Prayer causes you to even pray more. The more you pray, the more you want to pray. Hallelujah. And then when you pray, it causes you to turn. There's always some level of repentance. It causes you to turn around from what you're doing. Praise God. It causes, amen, you to turn from what you're doing. Prayer opens heaven. Amen. Number five. Prayer causes heaven to open. It tells you in the book of, of the same um, Chronicles, he said, if I shut up heaven, Second Chronicles 7 and 13, if I shut up heaven, uh, if I send the locusts to devour the land, if my people that are called by my name should humble themselves and pray. So the, the shutting up of the heaven means that there is a time heaven can be open. Praise God. A lot of people argue and, and contend about that. So you should not pray about opening heaven because you don't know what's coming out of heaven. Hey, I know what's coming out of heaven. And I'm not talking about just the second heaven. I'm talking about opening up heaven. Amen. Jesus said, if I shut up heaven. So which means that there is a shutting up that God can do. And if you go to the book of James, and I'll get down to it later. James chapter 5, the Bible said Elisha was a man, Elijah was a man subject to passions just as we were, but he prayed and amen. He said he prayed and he asked God to shut heaven up and there was no rain for three and a half years. And then later on, he prayed again and he asked God to open heaven and the rains came. So prayer positions, positions you, praise God, to be able to affect, amen, climates, to be able to affect weathers, to be able to affect the elements that is around us. But if you don't pray regularly, then you would not have the spiritual, amen, capacity or wherewithal to enter the realm of the spirit to cause something to change, praise God, even in the climate or around us. And a lot of people have fallen weak and have fallen prey to this old notion that, you know, you're not supposed to pray like that. You know, God doesn't want you, amen, affecting the elements, affecting the climate. Well, then I don't know. Then let's not waste your time praying because there have been some days I've had to pray and say, Lord, please don't let it rain right now. 
Don't let the drinkers. I need to, and this happened just recently. I mean, the clouds were like, buka, 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 buka. you know, it was like dark and gray. And I mean, it was like those, those dark, angry looking crowds. And it was lightning and thunder. And you know, uh, 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 um, you know, I had to, I had to go out somewhere, but my car was not in the garage. It was parked outside of the garage. And so uh, the person that was driving me was like, oh my goodness, prophetess, you need to come in now because it's about to pour down here. And I mean, that those clouds was like, yes, we are gathering. And I was all the way, all the way in my house. And, and I said, Father, I said, do not let it rain until I'm safe and secure into that car. Praise God, in that vehicle. And people of God, I kid you not, as I, I went around, I got up my stuff, got up my bag, as I was walking out, I heard another booga, 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 booga. And I was like, oh my goodness, and the enemy was like, you're gonna get soaking wet. And I said, no, I won't. I have declared it will not rain until I get in that car. And like the people say at our church, how would you know? Praise God. When I entered that car and sat down, as soon as I closed the door, click, I did not even put my seatbelt on good. It looked as if, amen, one billion gallons of water came pouring down. I mean, it was like white rain. And and I said, well, thank you, Lord. I had to, I had to say thank you because why? I prayed a simple prayer that it should not rain and God honored my words. So you can pray these type of prayers just like Elijah did. So prayer produces, amen, transformation. Prayer produces growth. Praise God. I mean, your consistency and continuance in prayer is what is going to cause, praise God, you to grow and you to be transformed. A lot of Christians struggle with the transformation process. And they say, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not used to this. I'm not used to living like that. I'm not used to that. And it's because they don't have a prayer life. As soon as you watch somebody that is born again and they begin to pray, you begin to see that person begin to take on some level of spiritual transformation. Transformation. And as you look back a year or two years later, you say, wow, I have grown or that person has grown. It's because what they engage in continual or consistent prayer. The last thing I want to say, this is probably number six. I don't know. But if you're counting, it's number something. Praise God. <laughs> but I'm not going to count. You count. The next one I'll just say is prayer produces, amen, a consistent relationship with God. Once you have gone into a place of prayer and you have adapted or maladapted to a lifestyle of praying, praise God, hallelujah, you become consistent with that prayer. You do it continually. It becomes a habit. Praise God. Then all of a sudden, you realize that the person has produced a relationship, a consistent, well-groomed, well relationship with God. And that, my beloved friend, is what you should be aiming for as a child of God, a consistent relationship. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, it says, pray without ceasing. That means, amen, do you just pray every minute, every second, every hour? Praise God, amen. Well, maybe not, but at least have a consistent lifestyle that has been, amen, regimented, amen, that prayer is not just an emergency, but prayer is the way you live. So if you're going to make it as a Christian, you want to develop what is called a lifestyle of prayer, a lifestyle of talking to God. I speak to God more than I speak to anybody else. I talk to him like I'm talking not just to a best friend, but as though I understand he is my everything. The Holy Spirit is my uh, my communicator. He is my, he is everything that he, he teaches me. He comforts me. He, he prays God. He propels me. But this relationship that I have with the Holy Spirit, I did not have it on day one. I had to develop it until I get to the point now where I know he knows me and I know that I know his voice. So I don't care if I'm in a room with a million people. I know when the Spirit of God is speaking to Maddie and I'm able to stop and obey or do exactly what he says. So prayer produces a consistent relationship and fellowship with God. Voice Thessalonians 5, 7, that's your scripture. Praise God, fellowship, koinonia. It produces a type of fellowship that cannot be severed or separated. Am I talking to someone today? Praise God, moving right along. I'm running out of time. But prayer, amen, produces an anointing. It produces an anointing. That anointing, it, it is to, to, to the point where you're doused, you're, oh, you're covered with a fragrance 
fragrance that automatically attracts the presence of God. It is without a doubt, no matter where you are, and then all of a sudden, you say, I feel the presence of God, or even people around you can feel the presence of God. So prayer produces a fragrance. It causes you to rise up and to be able to function in an anointing. You know, one of the things that uh, my husband often say, and I, I and I agree with him, is a person who does not pray is a dangerous person. Praise God. If you're in relationship with people that do not pray, your, your life is at risk. You are in danger, and so are they. So, amen. People who don't pray are dangerous. People are uh, prophets that don't pray. Uh, even more dangerous. If you have a pastor that does not pray, my God, I want to say run for your life because what are they hearing? Where are they getting their information from? You know, so everybody prays. You know, uh, uh, Muslims, they say pray seven times a day. Hindus pray. Jews pray a minimum of three times a day. Christians, I mean, I often ask, how often do you pray? Prayer has to become a practical habit. Prayer has to become a lifestyle. Prayer has to become a, this is what I do. This is who I am. I am I'm saturated with prayer. Prayer has to almost become normal. It has to become normal. And what do I mean by that? Just like how you don't have to think to wink. You don't have to say, okay, I'm about to wink my eye. Okay, get ready. I'm about to wink. Are you ready? Watch and see now. No, you don't get you don't get ready to wink. Winking is almost like a, a reflex. It just happens. It happens automatically. You don't need to be stimulated to wink. I mean, unless something is wrong with, you know, one of your windshield wipers, you know. But it happens because it's normal. Prayer should become normal to every Christian. So, amen, it produces the anointing. It produces favor. Can I? go on to write. Good. For those of you that are writing quickly, amen, I have to go. Prayer, amen, also produces a sustained lasting result and it also gives you success. If you're trying to find true success, not short-lived, notice I use the word sustained. Praise God. Lasting. These are, are words that can describe the type of lifestyle you will have with success if you pray. People who don't pray, one of the things I notice is that their success is short-lived. They, they, they made success celebrate today, but they will weep and holler tomorrow because their success is short-lived. It is not sustained. When you have a consistent lifestyle, prayer produces a lasting result and it produces long-time success. So it's not an overnight and then you're back broke again. You know, it's like, you you know, hey, look at me, look at me. You know, I just got this. I got that bomb. It's gone. It's written off. It's stolen. No, prayer causes things to stay in the right perspective. Please, if you're being blessed by what I'm saying right now, and if you're coming in, praise God, I want you to do me a favor. Praise God. Amen. Type in the chat group right now. Prayer works. Amen. Prayer works. These are the benefits of prayer. Type it in right now quickly because some of you are going to look back on these notes and you're going to realize when the devil is trying to discourage you that prayer does have benefits. Hallelujah. Prayer does get results. Prayer, amen, is powerful. And building a lifetime of prayer is even much more powerful. So for the sake of time, I must continue. I'm, I'm, I'm so, so much right on the edge of time. So remember that if you want to get sustained or lasting results and to have what? A good length of success, you do what? You pray. So, okay, so so one of the next things I want to say is that prayer, the uh, next prayer I want to bring for you today is prayer, amen, it is an important, praise God, because we want to use it as an equipment, praise God, as an equipment. Some people say an in, in, instrument, I say as, as an equipment, praise God, in the time of warfare or spiritual battles, praise God, you want to use it as an equipment or as a weapon in the time of warfare and spiritual battles. People who don't pray when they end end up in some type of warfare or some type of spiritual battle they are the first to get taken out back one little shot and they're out 
they're gone. They feel like they're giving up. They feel like they're losing their mind. They feel like I can't do it because why? They don't have a lifestyle of prayer. This is an example of David. I don't have much time, but I'll share it. David was known as a, as a man of war, but David spent more time praying than he spent doing anything else. So that's why when a lion came, he was able to defeat it. When a bear came, he was able to defeat it. When Goliath came, he says, you, you uncircumcised Philistine, I'm going to do with you exactly what I did with that lion and what I did with that bear. I took him out. So prayer causes you to win in spiritual battles and also in the time of warfare. Prayer produces that equipment, that weapon, that instrument of mass destruction. Praise God. Amen. So these are just some of the basic things. Amen. I'm running out of time. I'll see if I can probably give you maybe two or three more prayer. Amen. Activates the angelic realm. This is one of my most favorite favorite is favorite is favorite is points about prayer it activates the angelic realm prayer causes angelic visitation if you need an angel you know somebody said i need an angel okay here you go this is how you get an angel pray and as you pray you ask the spirit of god to send his angel send me an angel i need an angel to go before me in the way i need an angel to deal with this to open this door to, to, i want to be served quickly i want an angel to resolve this help me to resolve uh, this matter this dilemma or deal with my adversary the angels of the Lord will come to your rescue Genesis 28 praise God you see where now Jacob is there and he sees a vision as he's resting of angels ascending and descending he is angry at the moment because he's like oh how dreadful is this place I didn't even realize that this was the house of God which means those angels was there working and accomplishing things and he was there running from Esau or all this crazy stuff going on in his life and he didn't realize he had access to the throne of God. He didn't have access to angels. Praise God. So I'm giving you two more points and I'm done. So God wants you now to be in a position of prayer. He wants you to be in a position of what? Praying and knowing how to pray and knowing how to get results. Prayer produces dominion. Prayer gives you, amen, authority in the realms of the spirit. Prayer, amen, just like Elijah, causes things to obey your voice and including climate, climate, and other adverse situations. Prayer will also help you to keep your faith alive and vibrant. Prayer produces instant and sustained miracles of healing, signs, wonders, you name it. Prayer does this. Prayer drives out demons, praise God, and brings you into deliverance. The last one I'm going to give you today is that prayer gives you favor with God and with man. If you want our favor with God, and you want our favor with man, learn how to pray. <coughs> learn how to pray and learn how to pray every day. Well, beloved, that's it. I'm done. I wanted to just share these with you today. I'm so out of time. I know, I promise you, I have a whole, amen. I, I don't know, I, I don't know what to call it, a whole chest, <laughs> a whole treasure box. I can give you because I've been doing this for so many years. I've been praying and engaging myself in prayer amen from the age of 12 and i'm i'm telling you god has really blessed me and he has given me intel in this arena of prayer and i get results so amen i want you to tune in next time do me a favor would you do me a favor go back over all these points i gave you today i know i told you 14 or 15 i probably went up to maybe 19 or 20 <laughs> but go back over them it's going to help you grow will you do me a favor will you just send this link to maybe seven of your friends or, or drop it in your chat group send it out to somebody it's all free of charge amen it's going to help that person send it to your family group send it to your co-workers and tell them they need to just check this out praise god amen don't forget we're in our time of consecration 21 days of prayer and fasting if you want to join us anyone can join us anywhere in the world go on to our website at believersfaith.com or maddynottage.org and you can get the details on how you can be a part of the live zoom somebody may say well why would i want to be a part of the live zoom promise you you would want to be a part of the live zoom because during the live zoom sometimes a person will call you out or call your name or prophesy to you or even bring you or your family into deliverance 
lives, amen, or just be a blessing to you. So you want to be on the live zone, but you also can join us on YouTube. 6 a.m. is the live prayer. You don't want to miss it. 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So come alongside us and let's get you moving and functioning in the things of God. Don't miss our Wednesday and Friday night service at 7.30 p.m. We're here every weekend. Amen. BFOMI Global. We're praying for the sick, praying for those that have needs, and we're watching God bring, amen, the answers. Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't miss us. Amen. Come and be with us. In fact, coming very soon, amen, uh, 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 we'll be in, Apostle will be in Texas, and I will be here on, in South Florida on a Sunday, but you want to get into some of these revival services. And don't forget, the Spiritual Warfare Conference is coming up at the end of October. Go again to the website. It's free. Register. Everybody should come. You're going to be blessed by it. The Spiritual Warfare Prayer Conference is the end of October. Sorry, November 1st to <laughs> November 5th. Praise God, our prayer retreat is in December. Praise God, you can also be a part of that. Well, listen, beloved, I'm out of time. I'm not out of words. I just wanted you to know today that God loves you and he cares so much about you. Amen. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. And those of you that are sowing, thank you for your offering. Thank you for your seed. Hallelujah. May God bless your seed as you're giving it today. Praise God. The information is right here at the bottom of the screen. You can go on ahead and sow. You can give. Everything is right there. Push pay, uh, Zelle, all is there or on our website or call the call center. We do have an active call center. You can call. You can also give there. Praise God. Amen. God bless you. I hope that you were blessed by what we did today, what we shared. Let us know in the comments if you want to receive a more of, of these teachings like this. In fact, what I will do for those of you, praise God, if you will just uh, email us, we will be glad to send you, drop us a note, we'll send you the notes from today's uh, 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 podcast, and we'll be, be glad to give you a little free e-notes or e-book on our little teaching for today. There's much more. Today was just this part one on some of the benefits, and, and next time, we'll give you even more. Until then, amen. I love you. May the blessings of God be upon you and upon your family. In Jesus' Jesus' name, shalom. God bless you.